Thank you for the presentation. So today I will talk about okay, snake bites in the Brazilian Amazon, neglected effect antivenous to a neglected population. Uh, it's good that uh, I have uh, previous speeches uh, that more or less talk about the same thing, but it will be a different view. So now it's for Amazon. Uh, so I think that you know, but uh, snake bites have been an uh, overlooked problem for a long period. Uh, despite the 2.7 million bites, 130,000 deaths, and 400,000 disabilities. Uh, knowing that snake bites predominantly affect the poor, uh, since 2017, the World Health Organization recognized uh, this disease as category A, neglected tropical disease. And uh, with more than 100 snake bites, um, per 1,000 people in Brazil, snake bites is considered an important medical problem. So Brazil registers about 30,000 snake bites each year with a high impact in the Brazilian Amazon, as we can see here, despite the, all the underreported accidents. And regarding the incidents, this is just for you have an overview. Uh, we have in Brazil 17 snake bites per 100,000 people. In the Brazilian Amazon, it's 48 accidents, snake bites per 100,000 people. In Roraima, that is the state that I live today, uh, we have 65 accidents per 100,000 people. So it, it is the state, the Brazilian state, with the highest incidence in Brazil. And when we go to isolated indigenous community, this number is much higher. So regarding Yanomami indigenous community, that is the biggest one of Brazil, we have 200 accidents per 100,000. So this number is 11 times more the incidence of Brazil and four times more the incidence of the Brazilian Amazon. And just for a comparison, uh, cancer today, the incidence is 190 new cases per 100,000. So what is Roraima? So Roraima is this state of Brazil, the northernmost state of Brazil. And inside the uh, Amazon forest, as we can see here in green, and with the unique capital above the equator line that is Boa Vista. And the name Roraima is in allusion of this beauty mountain that is called Roraima. Uh, and regarding vegetation in Roraima, we have 33% of savannas that are open areas, as we can see here in the, up in the panel, and 67% of tropical forest. And uh, in this way, we have two main different species of snakes. So we have rattle snakes in the open areas, and also peach vipers in the forest. And here, I highlight our main river that it's called Rio Branco, that means White River. So uh, the high incidence of snake bites in Roraima as well in, in the Yanomami indigenous community can be explained since we have 4% of our territory as indigenous territory, as we can see here in red. So there in Roraima, we have 11 indigenous ethnicities, 32 indigenous communities, and that speak eight different languages. And moreover, we have lack of research support. We lack doctors and health supplies, including antivenoms. And also we lack uh, educational programs and prevention campaigns. So here I brought some pictures from our patients, real pictures. As we can see, uh, Roraima has an important medical problem concerning snake bites. The administration of antivenom based on polyclonal antibodies produced in horses is the only specific treatment available against snake bites. I think we discussed this already in this panel. But there are many questions and obscure information regarding antivenoms that I will talk about. Um, the issue one, né, I put here a question, are the heterologous polyvalent antivenoms real effective? So the literature says that polyvalent antivenoms are only 25 to 30% effective, while that is actually not proven. 
but uh, I will explain this better using Brazilian example. So in Brazil, we have acrotalid antivenom, that is antivenom recommended for all Brazilian rattle snakes, but this antivenom is produced against two species of rattle snakes. On the other hand, we have botropic antivenom that is recommended for all pt vipers from botropis genius. And this antivenom is produced against five species of this kind of pt viper. But the thing is that regarding rattle snake, we have six different rattle snake subspecies in our country, as we can see here. And when we, we check the, compo uh, the composition of these venoms, we can see that they are quite different. Uh, so here uh, I can highlight the Crotalus durissus huruima, the first one in the table. So we can see the high percentage of crotoxins, serinoproteases, metalloproteases, and this is very different from the other snakes. Moreover, when we check the biological activities of these venoms, they are also very different. And in addiction, in Roraima, we are conducting clinical studies to show evidence that antivenom, the rattle snake antivenom, is much less effective for our unique rattle snake. Because as Nikki presented, the rattle snake of Horaim is in the north, and the antivenom, the heterologous antivenom, is produced with the venoms from the south rattle snakes. And regarding pt vipers, this problem is much bigger. So we have 29 species of Botrops, pt vipers, and as I told you, we have the antivenom produced against the five main species. And of course, I don't have uh, an article showing uh, and uh, comparing all these uh, species, but here we can see that the venom profile in, in a simple electrophoretic gel, we can see that they are quite different as well as the enzymatic activity. And when we go to proteomics, again, we can see that these venoms are very different. So how a unique polyclonal antivenom formulation can neutralize all these toxins for all these species. Moreover, if death occurs, F antivenom administration, how to confirm the cause of death caused by from venom or antivenom? So I brought here an example because in Roraima, this patient received all the recommended quantity of uh, antivenoms very fast, and he was very young with no comor comorbidities, and he passed away. So that's why we always question it if these antivenoms are real effective. Issue two, since we do not have any clinical studies, what confirms the effectiveness and safety of antivenoms? So again, I will talk about Brazil. So in Brazil, we have non-randomized placebo-controlled double-blind trial ever been conducted. And the problem you were asking, why? Because antivenos are in the market of Brazil since 1901. So this is the research, Vital Brazil, that produced the first antiveno in Brazil. And our regulatory agency is from 1999, this Anvisa from Brazil. And all the drugs that were in the market before the foundation of Anvisa continued in the market. So that's why antivenoms are still being uh, used for this kind of therapy. So clearly there are also limitations in the design of this study because the product, is, the product varies in each delivery. So I will explain better. So the batch one of one antivenom is different from the batch two of the same antivenom that is different of the batch three of the same antivenom. So how could a regulatory agency evaluate efficacy and approve different products? And why they are different? Because the horse can change, the horse can get sick, and this will change the uh, quantity production of antibodies. The horse diet can change, the weather can change the antibody production, and the, the diet of the snake can change and the venom pool can change. So that's why in the end, when we change the, the batch of an antivenom, it's a different antivenom. And in clinics, what uh, we saw is that sometimes that batch of antivenom worked well, and years later, doesn't work anymore. So we can see that the batch uh, change a lot. So horses are a biological system with a diverse genetic and immune system which cannot provide 
a uniform product quality at the end of the manufacturing process. Issue three, are heterologous antivenom safe? So we can explore in the literature, we have many articles reporting anaphylaxis regarding this kind of heterologous antivenoms that can vary in the literature. So sometimes they said 10% of the victims develop anaphylaxis, but others 40%. We also can have a pyrogenic reaction, although now at this point it's much less. Serum sickness, again, this percentage can vary, so 7 to 56% of the victims, depending on the region. And moreover, 70% uh, of the antibodies are non-neutralizing antibodies. So we have many healthy issues because of the foreign bo bodies injected into human bodies. Issue four, antivenom shortage, especially for population in remote regions. So we know that snake bites normally occurs where in rural areas and in the forests but antivenoms are available only in the main hospitals. Why? Because the victim can have an anaphylactic shock and needs to be in the hospital. So in Brazil, we don't have antivenoms in the small healthy units. So when this kind of accident occurs, the patient, the victim will take a long time to reach the main hospital. So especially for indigenous communities, it may take days to obtain healthcare. And subsequently, with this delay, the antivenom is no longer useful in reversing the effect in venom. Uh, I brought here this article that showed the itinerary of uh, victims of snake bites, and I will highlight the patient four. So this patient, to reach the main hospital and get the treatment, have to uh, walk, then get a, a small uh, boat, then a motor bo motorboat, then um, a car, then wait for transportation, then get ambulance, then, then get an airplane, and then get ambulance again. So it took more than 20 hours for this patient get the antivenom and the specific treatment. Issue five and last issue, the use of equines as living producer producers of antivenoms confront us from ethical concerns. So in this audience, we have most immunologists. So I'm pretty sure that you agree with me that in 1894, a revolutionary treatment to cure diphtheria wrote heterolog serotherapy into the history of modern medicine. And in that time, in 1895, the Pasteur Institute had about 136 horse and a production of 7,000 liters of blood per month. And in that time, they said that equine are the victims to our progress in immunology. But still today, we use the, the same technology. And the, the, the thing is that we have rare description of experimental processes in horse. We don't know how many horse are killed, how many horses we use in this century to produce antivenoms. And also, we don't have documents showing the procedures and how these antivenom productions are being. So I brought this one that it's a very rare document from 1947 showing that over a three-month period, 24 injections totaling an amount of venom equivalent of 1,512 scorpion stings, stings was inoculated into one horse. And in the document, the horse's reactions throughout the immunization process were described in detail. I will read for you. With each injection, the horse demonstrating, demonstrated intense reaction to pain, showing widespread trembling, brief analysis, nasal and tear hypersecretion, arising the body temperature, intense sweating. Such symptoms lasted no more than 12 hours. So moreover, if the horse had weight loss and responsiveness to keep a title of antibodies and fractures due, uh, due to the accident falls taken by the weakened animals, indicated that the horse would be submitted to total bleeding. So in this draw, we can see uh, total bleeding. So we can see that they are collecting blood from horse. And maybe you are questioning what is total bleeding. So consisted of inoculating the animal saline solution that kept 
circulatory mechanism delaying hemorrhagic shock to allow the animal to survive until all the blood could be withdrawn to recover, of course, the antibodies in a procedure that could take as long as two days. So the intense worldwide demand for hyperimmunized plasma has written a crude trajectory of horse exploitation, which are still not entirely dimensioned. So with all these issues, my question is how come antivenoms are being administered extensively and promoted as if it is well proven and following the horse welfare? So after all these questions, if the antivenom is, is it real effective? Is it safe? Is it an ethical therapy? Is it available for all? I think that probably you are doing another question. Do we have an alternative treatment? So uh, since May 2019, the World Health Organization uh, produced this strategy, uh, as uh, Abdul told us, to mitigate snake bites in 50% till 2030. And uh, among the strategy objectives, we can see it ensure safe and effective treatment. So what are we doing to change the ancient use of horses as an antibody machine? So there are, we know, especially in this conference, that there are many progress in antibody discovery and technology, antibody engineer approaches, and antibody manufacturing. Actually, if we check the global antibody market uh, profit, we can see that in 2021, we have more than $100 billion of profit, and it is expected to reach more than about $108 billion uh, till 2025. And uh, today we have more than 100 monoclonal antibodies in the market, so 120 in Europe, 112 in USA, 77 in Brazil, and 36 in India. And all these monoclonal antibodies are being used for treating autoimmune disease, cancer, infectious disease, chronic disease, genetic disease, and metabolic disease. But regarding neglected tropical disease, we don't have monoclonal antibodies and not for snake bites. So we need novel antivenoms composed of monoclonal antibodies to eliminate animal derived antibodies and to make available more effective and safe antivenoms. So what are we doing to change this scenario? So I have been working about 15 years with phage display technology. So I worked with the discovery of fully human monoclonal antibodies target animal derived toxins, so we could produce an, a monoclonal antibodies against different toxins from different venoms, Brazilian venoms. So I brought here, we produced uh, antibodies against toxins from scorpions, titus cellulatus, uh, targeting rattle snakes, coral snakes, pit vipers, and also bees. But although we had, we did many advances in this discover, we still are very far to have a real antivenom. So although many efforts have been done, it's far to have an effective human antivenoms available. So how I could be working with a display for so a long time. So in 1998, my mentor, my PhD mentor, he went to MERC to uh, do a postdoc. And after that, he learned phage display and brought pioneer the technique to Brazil. And it was very early. Uh, John is here to not, for me not lie, uh, because the first human uh, library, human monoclonal antibody library, was produced by John in 1990. 1999, yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, unfortunately, Professor José Pedro Barbosa passed away in 2019. And today, my group, Snake Bite Horaima, is working on basic clinical. Uh, research as well as in an educational program. So we are bioprospecting venom compounds, performing genomics and proteomics, and discovering fully human antivenoms. In clinical, we are following snake bite victims in hospital and health centers and inside the Yanomami indigenous community. And we also have an educational program where we are educating the local population, including indigenous, and training health professionals trying to mitigate the 
snake bite problem. So I will talk very quick about our educational program. So we have websites in Portuguese and in English, so you also can access it. And uh, I brought here because the meeting is in my website at this moment. And also we have uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube channel, because we want to reach all kinds of population and take information about snake bite for all kinds of population. Uh, we also promote in our YouTube channel online webinars all months with a very important and uh, uh, renowned scientists in the field. We are also doing a snake bite training program in different aspects and for different population. Also, we have a snake bite prevention and control program. So we are providing basic information on preventive measurements in different Roraima communities. So rural population, indigenous arms, Venezuelan migrants. So as I showed you, we are in the border with Venezuela because we are the northmost state of Brazil. And we have received many Venezuelan at the last years and others. Also, we produce illustrated informative material in different languages. I have some in English, if you want. Uh, unfortunately, not in Dutch. But we, we also have many indigenous uh, languages because, as I told you, we have 11 different languages spoken in Roraima. So we needed to take this uh, knowledge for all these communities. And we also are very uh, active in mass media. And thus, Snakebite Roraima Research Group has been working on prevention, first aid, effective and safe treatment, as well as trained medical stuff to allow many victim, victims to return more quickly to good health and lives. I would take the opportunity to invite you to visit the poster of my friend and collaborator, Isadora, that is working on the discovery of monoclonal antibodies against metalloproteases from PT vipers of Brazil. And I also would like to invite you for a meeting that I will promote uh, this year in Roraima, would be the first international meeting in Roraima. So we have many confirmed speakers in the field. And I would like to thank you professors from my research group, students, and also collaborator, including my friend Andreas that's here, that always support my research in Brazil. And of course, I would like to thank you, Paul, for this kind invitation, and Chelsea and Michael from the Informa Connect to make, me, make, make possible to be here. And uh, to finish, I will show you a very quick video regarding our research group and educational program. Do you know the Snake Bite Roraima group? The Snake Bite Roraima group performs basic and clinical research with venomous animals besides promoting training programs and prevention campaigns regarding snake bites. In fact, Roraima is the Brazilian state with the highest snake bite incidence. But why? There are many factors responsible for that. The lack of prevention campaigns, the absence of trainings for health professionals, the difficult access to treatment since a large part of the state is indigenous territory and the low investments. But the problem of snake bites is not only in Roraima state and in Brazil. Characterized as a neglected disease, snake bite affects more than 5 million humans per year, and it's responsible for over 100,000 deaths and 300,000 amputations annually. Due to this important global public health problem, the World Health Organization in 2019 developed a strategy with the goal of reducing snake bites by 50% till 2030. The Snake Bite Roraima group is included in this goal. It is even founded by the Hamish Augustine Foundation, which supports the Global Snake Bite Initiative. Moreover, we have support and partnership of Federal University of Roraima, Health Secretary of Roraima State, CESAL, and the Environment and Water Resources Foundation, FEMAR. Thus, through educational projects and scientific research, 
the snake bite Roraima group has persistently trying to reduce the problem of snake bite in Roraima. This is the snake bite Roraima group. If you want to know more about our actions and research, visit our website and social media. And thank you for your attention. I don't know whether we have time for a question or one ban in question. I think uh, on that note, uh, once again, we give you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>